Hello Sagittarius. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitsche here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you're connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. For those of you that know my voice very well, I'm still getting over my cold. The bronchitis is gone, yay. And I just have a little bit of a sore throat still. So, on the mend. Thank you everybody for your well wishes. Secrets. A lot of secrets. So for those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need to provide you with some clarity. At the end of this reading, I do channel Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. So some of you might have been in a relationship in the past. This could be current as well. Others of you, it could be a situationship. And for a small portion of you, it just could be that there's a whole lot of energy and you know there's something there. And you connect with this person, but they're not really speaking up and it's not really going further. But you know it's a very intense connection. All right. So we do have some cards here that are a bit, um, a little bit on the dark side. Dark meaning that they're not really positive feelings and emotions. And for some of you who may be watching this, um, this is what cross watcher, this is what you're feeling, but there could be a possibility here, Sagittarius, that you might be going through these feelings as well because of the intensity of these cards. They're very intense or very highly emotional kind of cards. And so um, this does mean that you might also be going through the same thing. This is simply because you may be mirroring each other. You may be um, kind of catching each other's um, energy in the sense you're sharing each other's energy. You think of them and you send that vibe to them and then they think of you and they send that vibe to you. So that's how there's this exchange. But sometimes we can actually be feeling the same things as our person of interest as well. Here we have mothering followed by sensuality, wild woman, cycles, illusion, anger and rage, fear, awakening. And then we have hearth and home under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Sagittarius, when I think of you, I see this person that has nurturing, caring, protecting feelings someone that has this unconditional love. This love that exists, it is true, it's sacred, and it's pure. And I sense this from you, that this is the type of person you are. There's no doubt you are very sensual. You're very tantalizing. Just looking at you makes me want to keep looking. I can't stop. I can't take my eyes off you. Your sex appeal, your charm, your beauty, your charisma, your talents, the way you dress, And the way you are with others, I like what I see. 
and I want to be close to you. It's hard for me to take my eyes off you. Yes, in a way, I'm addicted to you. But this addiction that exists inside of me, it's sometimes covered up with false beliefs, false words that have come out of my mouth. I understand that you feel that I have been sneaky. I have had this sneaky behavior. I have been this individual who says one thing but does something else. I have had pieces of information and I have spoken but I don't tell the whole story. I hide a few sentences here and there. What you don't know won't hurt you. Or will it? Now I realize that the things that I have said and done, they have been deceitful. I have been sneaky. And it has hurt you. There's a lack of truth. And because of that, now there is a lack of faith and trust in this connection. In me. Yes, I have been sneaky and I have done things and said things that I really wasn't supposed to. And I obsess over the things that have happened in this connection. And I obsess over you what we were, what we are, and what we could have been. And yet, even though I think of you so much, and the situation that we find ourselves in now, I hide behind a false mask, behind a veil. I don't tell and I don't talk. I don't say what it is that I'm feeling. I hide it all. And when I hide it, it actually makes me angry. I don't like hiding from you. But it frustrates me when I do. It's not your fault. But the situation itself is making me quite upset as to why I was sneaky. And why was I unable to to let go of you in that sensual way. Sometimes I would treat you and think of you as an object. And that irritates me, that gets me upset. Why did I do that to you? It also upsets me, why do I hide from you? This upsetness that I have, there's a sense of irritation, agitation, annoyance. But what really gets me angry, on top of all this, is the fact that I am afraid. I fear you. I fear what I have said to you when it comes to the truth. I'm paranoid because I'm afraid that you'll find out how sneaky I truly have been. I'm paranoid. There's a lack of self-confidence self-esteem, there's a whole lot of insecurities. Now I feel as if I am unworthy of you. You deserve better. I am worthless. There's fear, anxiety, and a whole bunch of other feelings that I feel on the inside. It's hard for me to be that individual, someone that I'm not. And I was trying the whole time. Sometimes you've seen this right through me. That there are things that I have been hiding and I haven't really told you the truth. And I'd pretend it as if it's all okay. But now I've come to the realization I've had this awakening moment. I see now things differently. Now I see things 
through your perspective. I see things in a way now where everything is different. Where the things that I have done and said, I put myself into your shoes and I see how that has affected you and this connection and that is also what makes me angry. I see things through your perspective. I see things through your lens now. Before I did not. And because I do that and I have done that, I see how things are so different. I also feel that in this connection, there is this sense of hearth and home. Wherever you are, that is where my home is. You have this way of being so open and honest. And I have felt that being with you, talking to you, it really has made me a different person. I can feel that I can talk to you about anything and not fear being judged. Whenever I'm lost, you are that guiding light. And when I'm cold, you are that warm blanket. Overall, right now, I see you as somebody who is very loving and caring someone who is very gorgeous and beautiful and handsome. But I don't say it. I hide it all. I don't say how nurturing you are. I don't tell you how attracted I am. And these feelings make me angry. Not at you, but at myself. This needs to change. All right. Sagittarius. Some pretty rough cards here. This person gave you a few things, they did a few things, and then they just took a step back. And now when they've done that, it's hurting you, but it's also hurting them. In addition to the hurt, there's some anger here because of what has happened. The anger, it's not about you, it's not for you, it's how this person has turned this wonderful connection into something that has now become so sour. It was something beautiful before, and now it is sour. All right. I have here the Lover's Path Tarot. Hmm. Holy moly. Okay. Very rare combination. I don't think I've ever gotten this in any of my readings online. Uh, the Nine of Cups and the Love Card under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. What's really interesting about these is that they are very positive cards when you read them in a positive way. However, this deck I read in the reverse. So everything is going to be the opposite. Here, why do I look at this particular deck in the first place for those of you who are new? This is for those of you that were in a connection and then things just kind of went downhill. Everything just crumbled. And something that was very sweet, how and why could it become so sour? What happened? That's what I look into. This is for those of you that may have not had closure. You may have been ghosted. You may feel that um, this person just faded from your life and that the communication that you have is quite less now before it may have been more but now it's just absolutely like hardly anything maybe one text message a week or a month 
And for that reason, this person just breadcrumbing. And it's important to know the reasons why. So with these cards, I look at the why. With the Nine of Cups, this talks about traditionally ecstasy, the granting of wishes and sensuality. However, in the reverse, it talks about complacency. Taking a relationship for granted and overindulging. The inability to receive pleasure because of a lack of of satisfaction, a whole lot of dissatisfaction. There's a lack of sensual joy, not wanting to reunite with a loved one, not really wishing for you. Now, doesn't that seem very hurtful? Why is that? Let's have a look at the love card. This talks about Love, harmony, passion, and sensuality, but I am reading the reverse. A lack of love, a lack of peace and harmony, not really having a lot of passion, and not even feeling very sensual anymore. Feeling unworthy of love. Manipulating others with sexuality. Immaturity and irresponsibility in love relationships and game playing a player okay so this sums it up this is what happened nine of cups this person started to become very complacent they were taking the relationship that they had with you for granted and they were overindulging sensually Remember I said that this person felt that they were treating you like an object because of the sensuality card and they were quite upset. And then they were also afraid. They were fearing these things, what they did to you. This is where this all comes from. They feel as if they overindulged with you in certain pleasures. Maybe they were intimate with you. Maybe they just talked to you and it was all mental. It was all emotional and not physical. For some of you, it was physical. For some of you, it was emotional. All right? And for some of you, it was like just talking, and which is, of course, again, the mental part. Game playing. This person was playing games, and because they were not looking for love, they didn't feel that sense of satisfaction. Why? Because you thought you were looking for love. You knew that you were looking for love, but this person wasn't. This is why they were dissatisfied. Not because you are a terrible person and that you don't have love to give. Why were they dissatisfied? This is when we get the love card right there. They were dissatisfied because this individual did not feel worthy of love. Because they knew that they were manipulating you for sexuality Emotionally, physically, mentally. There was a sense of immaturity and irresponsibility in love relationships when dealing with this person. And there was a sense of game playing. Sorry guys, your person of interest was just basically using you. That's what happened here. Sums it up. Using you. Some of you may feel so crappy right now and... You gave it your best shot. Your person of interest was very much involved in the physical. Why were they involved so much in the physical and why not in the emotional? Remember, there is a sense of immaturity, irresponsibility when it comes to love relationships. It was because at this point in time, no matter what their age was or is, they are not interested in love. They are and they were only interested in the physical, being intimate, having that sensuality card, being addicted to you, being obsessed with you. That is what they were all about. 
And that is why it was very difficult for them to let go. That is why you feel that this person may have just used you. And you have been so sweet and so kind. The mothering card was there right in the beginning. So much has happened in this connection, and this is bad karma, guys. Not for you, for this person. Um, I'm not wishing bad karma, but karma is a cycle. Comes and goes, comes and goes. Whether it's this lifetime, whether it's to someone that they love, whether it's in the next life, but this per person is going to be punished in some type of way because of what they have done. They have been a very, very negative a person that has used you, misused you, very bad. Why did they do this? Did they do, did they do it on purpose? Kind of. A part of them did it on purpose. A part of them was just simply immature and inexperienced. Now, when somebody's immature, in all honesty, you can't really blame them because they're just immature. Their brain capacity just doesn't change like yours is. They're not resonating on the same frequency as you. But what's upsetting here is you actually gave your all to this person. Some of you, not all of you. And this person really did take it for granted. And you just kept giving and giving. They overindulged. They took and they took and they took. And you just gave and you gave. And it turns out that they were a, a player. I was going to say a bad word right now, but yeah. <laughs> they were a player. Once again, why were they a player? Because they were somebody who is very immature. And remember, this is another thing here, okay? Why did they discontinue speaking to you, talking to you, interacting with you? Why did they discontinue? The words there were unworthy of love. So a small part of them actually did mature. And a small part of them knew that, you know what, I can no longer abuse and use and misuse my Sagittarius, I feel unworthy of the love that they are giving me and therefore I'm going to take a step back because I do not deserve somebody as wonderful and as loving and as pure-hearted as the Sagittarius. And therefore, you know what? I'm a piece of crap. I keep using this person. I'm worthless. I don't deserve any of this kind of love because I am a naughty person. I am a player. This person deserves better. And therefore, I'm going to take a step back because now this is starting to make me feel very guilty, very upset for what I've done. This is a process, Sagittarius, very common. And now this person is going to grieve. They are going to repent. They are going to have nightmares. This might even show up in the next cards. Who knows? But you need to understand that this person did this for these reasons. And then, yes, they did. They did not like it. What they did. They realized what they did was wrong. And that is the reason you wonder why did this person disconnect with me? That's the reason why they stopped talking to you because they feel that you are a good person and they are not a good person. And they do not want to use or abuse you or misuse you in any way. And that's why they stopped talking to you. Is it your fault? Absolutely not. This is your person of interest. They are the ones that need to, <laughs> they need to get their crap together. Let's have a look. We have here the star card. So this is the beginner's tarot. And here I have a look at any actions, any plans, any intentions that your person of interest may have towards you in the coming future, something that may occur where this person, they may reach out. Okay, you got actually an extra card here. <laughs> oh my gosh, somebody really needs to sit this person down and talk to them, teach them about life. They should sit down with me. <laughs> Crosswatcher. Um, oh my gosh, there's so much going on here. Granted, Sagittarius, your person of interest really wants you passionately, but they are hella immature. Oh my God, they are so immature. It's just not happening. Not right now. 
It's happening. It's going to happen. But I recommend that you don't let it happen. Not yet. We have here the Star, the Ten of Wands, the Knight of Wands, the Fool card. Then we have the Ace of Cups. Overall arching theme, we have Seven of Wands. So with the Star card, it does talk about how in this connection, you are somebody who this person admires. They are in awe of you. You may be very famous. You may be getting famous. You may be really good at your job, your craft. There's something that you're really good at. And they admire you a lot to the point where you're like an inspiration. They also feel that the both of you are somehow destined to be together on a spiritual level. They feel someday, some way we will meet again, our paths will cross again. Ten of Wands, but the problem is right now, at the very least, they are burdened by responsibilities, by restrictions, constraints, other things that they have taken on, circumstances that they find themselves stuck in. One of the issues here is that would they like to move on? Yes, they would. But the problem is they are unable to move on because, because they see that there are too many things that they have undertaken and you are not one of those priorities right now. So let's say this person, the 10 of wands, they have 10 responsibilities, right? They have a full capacity of 10. They can no longer have another one, meaning they can't have you as the 11th or 12th because they're not going to have time. And then you're just going to get upset that you're not giving me any time. But it's because this person is very overwhelmed with other problems in their life. However, despite all this, there's that passionate side that they have for you, that heat that they have for you. My goodness, this person's in heat. The Knight of Wands. They are wanting to rush back into your life. Rushing like a player. Physically, this person is extremely attracted to you. And they're rushing back into your life. But they are also someone who is not as immature as they were before. Now this is a knight. It's not a page. A page would have been very sheepish, very shy. This now individual is a bit more bold. Are they a king? No, they're not. They're not even a queen. But they're just a knight. So there's a slight sense of this knowingness of maturity. This person has become a bit more mature than before, but not as much as they you know, possibly should be or could be. Then we have here the Fool card. The Fool card, for me, also indicates someone who is taking action first and thinking later. And that is someone who is very rash, very impulsive, compulsive, somebody that is still very immature. They're not wise. There's a lack of wisdom there. And so you have two cards here that are talking about somebody that's wanting the passion, wanting to be with you. However, they're very rash. They're very impulsive. They're very aggressive. What do you have to do? You have to be the one that sets the pace. If they enter your life hot and heavy, you need to basically push them aside and tell them, hey, your speed is this much. My speed is a little slower. We're not going to rush into anything. We are going to take our time and it's going to take this long. And basically me, Asnoitia, what I want you to do, what I would suggest for you to do is to grow with this person. Let this person know you, who you really are as an individual. And they will become more adult-like as time goes by and appreciate you more as a person first more of a friend instead of the physical, because there's a whole lot of physical feelings here, okay? So like they're, they just want to be with you. But the problem is, like I said, it's very passionate to the point where they're not thinking logically and very 
in an immature kind of way. So with the Fool card, it may finish as soon as it starts. So you don't want that to happen. Here we also have this hope and this proposal of love. This realization that, you know what, I do love my Sagittarius. That is wonderful. That is going to happen a while from now. But they are going to realize that with this passion that they have, the fact that they are unable to let go of you, the fact that you almost act like a more mature figure that teaches them and you're like a guide for them, they do admire this and they'll like this. They'll like the fact that you have your boundaries, your healthy boundaries. They will respect you for that. And that distance and that slow procedure that you're going to go through or the process, it's going to actually make them fall in love with you. So slow and steady wins the race. That is what's going on here. We have here Ace of Cups where this person is going to firstly ask for forgiveness for how they behaved. And then on top of that, they are professing their love to you that they do have overflowing love for you. And they have admiration for you. I'm getting the word tenacity. I usually don't use that word, tenacity, but that's the word that I'm getting right now. We also have here, um, and I would explain what it means, but I don't really know much, so that's why maybe you guys can Google that. And even let me know in the comments below if you have a chance. Seven of Wands, the overall arching theme. So there's a part of this person's in their heart and their mind, they know that there are certain things that they're struggling with. Now, what they want to do is before they even try to reach out to you, they want to get rid of these issues, these problems that they have to make these wands less. They don't want to have so many wands, so many burdens and problems and responsibilities. So they want to make certain things less so that they know, okay, I can handle this, but I can't handle this. Maybe I'll allocate this task or this responsibility to so-and-so person. This is something that's happening. They do realize that they're very overwhelmed and that they need to start to decrease the amount of things that they're taking on. Do they have love for you? They're starting to. Do they know where they're headed? Not really. Do they have passion for you? Yes, they do. Will they have a lot of time for you? Not so much, but they'll try. Will they be very impulsive, similar to before? They're, that nature hasn't changed. But the one thing that has to change now, Sagittarius, is you. If this person, not if, but when they do, because you got a lot of cards here where this person's going to take a chance towards you, they're going to reach out to you. When they do, if you want this to work out now uh, for the long term, my recommendation would be to take it slow. Because these two cards talk about somebody who is impulsive and compulsive and immature. Both of the cards. Very fiery nature. Sometimes the Knight of Wands is also considered a player card, but I don't call it a player card right now because you have the love right there, which is the Ace of Cups. So now that has transitioned, slightly changed. Just going to do a quick prayer. Hmm. First card, the strongest. Choose a new direction. The next two cards, I do not pick up the bottom cards, by the way. I just pick up the top card because for me, it's the one that has the most amount of energy. That is the way I read. However, I will let you know what the other two cards were. The other cards here are you are ready. And then we have yes. We also have here trust in the divine. Ooh, let go. And then we have wait. That's what you're going to have to do, almost like playing the player. You have to play the player. 
but you don't even have to do much because this person is going to start to fall in love with you. Not bad at all. Okay. So we have here, choose a new direction. So whatever path you're on right now, whatever decision you're making, the method that you're using, here basically the angels, archangels, Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel are sending these messages to you. They're basically saying here to choose a new direction, to choose a different method of approach to this situation, because what you've been doing before has been giving you a certain result. You need to change your method or in order, sorry, you need to change your method in order to have a different result. Um, we also have here trust in the divine. This is the divine timing. This is the plan. And they also want you for now to let go. Let go of communicating with this person. You don't have to stop loving them, but just don't, don't call them. Don't check up on them. Just let them be, leave them alone for now. Let them do their own thing. Because when they feel that emptiness, they will miss you. And when they miss you, they will feel value for you. And when they feel value, they know that you're worth something. When you're worth something, then they're afraid of losing you. You need to get to that part before anything else, because right now they just know that you're always there. You're always going to be there for them because that's how dedicated you are. Unfortunately, in this game of love, you have to show this player that, hey, you know what? It's not just you. So do yourself. You do you. Let this person do themselves, whatever they're doing. Eventually, this person's going to rush into your life. Remember that. And it's going to happen because they are going to miss you and they are afraid of losing you because now you're worth something to them. That's why they're saying here, wait, look for a sign. This could be signs and synchronicities. Here we also have, yes, excellent, two cards, greatest cards. Yes, with an exclamation mark, success with an exclamation mark. Yes, there will be success. Excellent. There will be success as long as you let go and wait. Yes, let go. Success will happen if you let go. Success will happen if you wait. And we have here forgiveness, the overall arching theme. Remember we had the Ace of Cups, right? So there is a sense of forgiveness. Somebody here has hurt someone's heart really bad, right? Somebody here started to feel very unworthy because they were using the other person. So somebody here needs an apology. Somebody here needs to make an apology. So there is going to be an apology. Someone's going to say sorry. The other person's hopefully most likely going to forgive them. Once that happens, Sagittarius, it's a beautiful reading. Yes, there will be success. But it's going to be a process. Remember, your person of interest right now, they are still learning. They're not as mature as you are in terms of love relationships. In this lifetime, you may have been sent uh, to teach them about love. What is love? Maybe they don't know. Their childhood, their youth, their adulthood, they may have gone through a few things where they've turned into what they are now because of the experience that, that, experiences that they've had. And you are here now to, cheat, to teach them, my God, I can't talk, <laughs> to teach them about love, to teach them that this is not the only way that the world works. There's also this side where there is love, where there is compassion, where there is truthfulness an emotion, and not just the physical. Your person of interest had a different viewpoint when it comes to relationships, and your viewpoint was different versus theirs. When they realized that there are these differences, then they started to think, and it's going to take them a while to get out of this kind of mindset. Once they finally get out, that's when they're going to be able to release themselves from these responsibilities, from these burdens, from these restrictions that they have. And they're going to try to be that person that you want them to be. 
Just remember, Sagittarius, to take it slow. Don't rush anything. This relationship has to grow organically and has to be based on friendship. And after that, it would be 100% solid. And that's your reading, Sag. I hope I was able to provide you with some clarity, some guidance in your situation. Do let me know in the comments below if any of this has resonated. For those of you who are new, I do have another channel called Asnoitia Audio on YouTube. It's absolutely free from beginning of the video to the end. It's all free. And it's um, based on a lot of the scenarios that my clients and all of you guys have gone through, some of these are relationship related videos. Some of them are spiritual connection related videos. And the other video that I have that I put up a while ago now, it's um, on negative energies, what and who are negative energies, how to get rid of these things. So do have a look at my other channel. And those videos that I have on relationships is basically advice, certain things that people hide on the inside that they don't really tell on average. I've created those videos so that you can have a better understanding when you are in a scenario or a situation. What does your person of interest think? How are they thinking? How do they behave? Why do they behave the way that they do? Those videos that I've created on relationships, that's where that comes from, where I've channeled those feelings and those emotions of the other person. And on average, that is what I've seen. That's why I created those videos. All right, guys. You all take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys again. Bye now.